Hello there folks, uh, hope you're all safe and well as usual and um, thanks for tuning in to another video where we look at Scotland and its history Now, it's the uh, 25th of January and you may ask what's the significance of that date Now, if you're familiar with the famous Scots poet Robert Burns or Rabbi Burns as uh, we say or as I recently found out in America, uh, you say Bobby Burns. Well, 25th of January is his birthday. He was born on 25th of January, 1759, in Alloway, in Ayrshire, which is uh, just in fact a couple of miles outside the, the town of Ayr. I would have loved to have been down there. Um, it's got his cottage. Uh, where he stayed and had a, a lot of history associated uh, with him, the uh, Alloway Kirkyard, um, the Tam O'Shanter story etc and also a monument to him as well, a rather impressive one I'd have loved to have went down there and done a piece on him down there uh, today but due to Covid restrictions that's impossible uh, but that will be for another year or certainly another time anyway I can actually just visit one of the places associated with Burns during his life a place where he stayed albeit just for a night now we are in Covington in Lanarkshire it's a, a small town on a back road um, most people probably never heard there uh, and I include many Scots that come from this area they probably never even heard it and even less have probably been through it Covington is just a, sm a small village a single row of houses um, it's got a castle which is trying to get the angle there, I'll give you a wee better look that's Covington Castle or Covington Tower but uh, this one is about Burns so we'll not cover that in this video but uh, I'm going to try and do something on it um, after I've finished this and I'll put in a separate video it's, it's a nice wee castle I've ashamed to say I've never actually been a walk around about it but I'm going to try and change that today Now, I've just parked off the main road there next to, next to the church, Covington Church or Covington Kirk as we would say I'll just go down onto the road and walk up and there is, it's a beehive structure just up there there's a wee corner on the road and there's a cairn which uh, we have a wee plaque on it that it was erected by uh, one of the, the Burns associations, one of the clubs um, to sort of uh, immortalise uh, in stone the link between Burns and the, the farm which is uh, just there that's Covington Mains and that's where Burns stayed so we'll have a wee walk up there and then um, see what we can see. It would be bad of me not to recite a wee bit of Burns uh, on the man's birthday and I'll do a wee one which uh, being winter as it is has got a wee bit of a well, a wee bit of a link so here goes The sweeping blast The sky o'ercast the joyless winter day let others fear to me more dear than all the pride of me the tempest howl it soothes the soul my grief it seems to join the leafless trees my fancy please their fate resembles mine It's a wee wintery one, uh, but 
it's a nicer day there than uh, that poem suggests, but when you're reciting Burns or even just reading his, uh, his poems, it's worth bearing in mind that they were written in an older style, his Scots. Um, a lot of time when they're, they're written down, they're converted into um, sort of modern English language and they don't always make as much sense so when I read that out I converted a few words uh, into how we would normally say them in Scots or older Scots that's kind of dying off now and you just have to bear that in mind there's a few, few bits in this like one in particular is my grief it seems to join as they would say in modern, they'd use the, the modern the word join. Now, two lines down, it's got their fate resembles mine. And you've got to ask yourself, well, that doesn't make sense, um, that doesn't rhyme. When you do away with the modern word join and replace it with what Scots would normally say is Jain uh, it then starts to make sense now that's just a wee example but uh, it's worth bearing in mind look at, if you're ever looking at Burns uh, look at it in the older uh, style um, because it, it does kind of make more a bit more sense so anyway We'll go on with this and we'll go up to the uh, up to the wee monument and we'll have a wee look. So I'll catch you up there. Cheers. It's quite a stunning castle. Well, technically a tower. Uh, is it sometimes referred to? I reckon there's a sort of raised garden uh, area in there. There's an old ducot there, or ducat, as we would uh, say in Scots. And that's where the, the people that lived in the in the castle or the tower would have kept pigeons for meat and quite possibly eggs as well. I think I'd have been fairly safe too so but a stunning sort of beehive construction. Now that's us just on this corner here at these at these trees there's a wee cairn in memory of Burnsy stay here. He wouldn't have actually stayed in that house there, that's a, a more modern uh, structure. But there may be some of the older older structures still about uh, in the farmyard itself. Don't know if we'll get a chance to see it's, it as a working farm and a, a private residence. But here we go. Just a simple cairn at the side of a road in Lanarkshire. Erected by Lanarkshire Association of Burns Clubs to commemorate the visit by Robert Burns to Covington Mains Farm on the 27th of November 1786. He was uh, visiting here when he was en route to, to Edinburgh and it was a two day journey from from his home and he made the journey on a borrowed pony and he meant to have started the journey on the you know, on the 27th of November so he'd have got here uh, roughly the halfway point uh, that night and stayed here uh, overnight uh, leaving I believe the following morning and continuing his journey to Edinburgh 
I mean that's just a just a site at the that side of a road, the Marnock's are a back road that doesn't see a lot of traffic and largely forgotten but such an important part of Scotland's history well maybe not the site as such but it's association to, to a man that proved to be um, such an important part of Scotland's history um, and even world literature and poetry but it's good that they've at least put something here to to immortalise it and the same with the, with the castle eh, Covington Castle or Covington Tower eh, however you want to say that's another eh, part of history that people will probably never see unless you, you're a local to this area or you get lost and accidentally drive past it but it's still eh, still good that it survives. Now that up there is a hill fort, a massive one too. That's a Quif Quan. That was one of the ones I mentioned on the the video when I done a Tinty Hill. And Tinty Hill is just there. Now there is another strange link for this uh, site at Covington uh, to Robert Burns or as we say in Scotland, Rabbi Burns. Now although uh, Burns was born in Ayrshire in 1759 as I said, his grandfather uh, rented a farm on the Denotter estate and that was in, under the possession of the Earls of Keith and the Marshals of Scotland. Like I said, um, Burns' grandfather, uh, also Robert, uh, rented a farm uh, from the Keiths and that farm uh, on the Denotter estate was a uh, clock in a hill uh, and he he farmed that land until he could no longer afford it. And in fact, the Keiths were big supporters of the Jacobites. In fact, the title marshal, uh, they, their job associated with the title was to protect Scotland's uh, regalia and also protect uh, the king. And they continued to back the true kings of Scotland. In fact, the true kings of Britain. Um, and due to that support of the Jacobites, they forfeited the lands that had to uh, bolt to the continent. And after that, so a rocky spell in the lands changing hands. Um, it's not a hundred percent known when, but um, the family moved down like a lot of Highlanders eh, into the lowlands to find work and that brought the Burnsies eh, down here now digressed a wee bit like I said there is an association with this site and it is actually the Keiths who used to also own this land they eh, acquired it uh, after the original owners um, forfeited their lands uh, after the, the wars of independence when they had uh, sworn allegiance to King Edward I in 1296 so 
at some point in the early 1300s, in the time of Robert the Bruce, I believe, the lands were awarded to the Keefs, and that was Robert the Keef. And he had the lands uh, in his possession until I think 1400s, uh, when they were sold to the Lindsays. It was, I believe, the Lindsays that actually built uh, this castle behind us. So. A wee bit of a wee bit of link there between the uh, the Burnsies and the Keefs, uh, tying them to this uh, this site, which is a wee bit of a coincidence that, that Robert Burns ended up here uh, a good few hundred years later. But uh, a wee a wee interesting fact there to put in. I just walked back down here towards uh, where I parked. Uh, in there at the kirk. That's the village of Covington down there. And uh, if you're ever passing through, you'll see uh, some stunning uh, thatched roof uh, houses, which would have probably been the same uh, as what they were in, in Burnsy's day. We would say thack it in Scotland. But, uh, aye. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'd have loved to have been down in proper Burns territory, but this will do his second best. But um, until next time, take care and uh, all the best. Uh, feel free to subscribe and hit the like button, add comments, whatever. So, until next time, slange.